So let's talk about for loops in PHP. So when we're dealing with loops, what we're doing is we're running the same code multiple times. Uh, and you do this for a number of different reasons. You may do this if you're going to be seeing what the total cost will be on something like interest if you take out a loan. So you could say if you take out a $100 loan with 5% interest, then the total th that you'll owe in the first year will be $105. And then what you can do with a loop is you can say then in the second year, it'll be, I don't know, $105 plus 5%, whatever that is, then the second year, the third year, the fourth year, the fifth year, that type of thing. So if you're looking for things like, if you're looking to track things longitudinally or be able to show that, that's one of the reasons that you would use a loop. Or another reason that you would use a loop is if you're going to be doing a report out of something like a database or a file. So if you're going to be pull, pulling multiple records out of a database or file, and then you're going to be printing that out, what you would do is basically you would say uh, print this information for the first line from a file and then loop continue to do that until you get to the end of the file. So loops are just a simple way to do a repetitive task until a certain condition ends up being true. Many times people decide to use a for loop. So for loop is one of the standard loops. There's also a do and a do while loop, but a lot of people, especially for simple tasks, decide that using a for loop is the best way to go. So with that, let's go over to the computer so I can show you what a for loop looks like. So this is a simple script to show you how the for loops works. Uh, I've called this for.php, and as always, open this with the, uh, the PHP tag. And so this right here really is all there is to a for loop. So the first thing that we're going to say is for, F-O-R. After that, we're going to open a parenthesis, and then we are going to give this for loop three different arguments. So the first thing that we are going to say is we are going to, to, for this particular script, is we are going to create a variable called x, and we are going to set the value of that variable to 1. So we're going to create variable dollar sign $x, and we're going to set the value to 1. We're then going to do a semicolon. Remember, basically, any time that you kind of think that like a line of code should end, a lot of times you'll use a semicolon. So you put a semicolon here where we go to the next argument. Then what we're going to say is for that variable that we just created, dollar sign $x, while dollar sign $x is less than or equal to 20, we want this loop to continue. So we're going to set, we're going to create and set the value of the variable x to 1. And then while x is less than or equal to 20, we want this script to continue. And then the final argument here, again, after a semicolon, is we're going to say dollar sign $x plus plus. So what this does is this takes the value of x, it adds 1 to the value of x and then sets the value of x to that new number. So here, so initially x equals 1. So what x plus dollar sign x plus plus does is it says x plus 1 essentially sets to x. So 1 plus 1 is now the value of dollar sign x, so now it's 2. Then x plus plus, the next iteration, it'll be 2 plus 1, so then dollar sign x will be worth 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then 6. So this is how you do the iteration. So we create x, we set it to 1, while x is less than or equal to 20, keep doing the loop. At the end of each loop, what we want you to do is we want you to add 1 to the value of x, and that's what will increment it up. Then all we're doing here, we then close the parentheses, we open a squirrely bracket, and then the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to print, and then with this is we print the value for x. So the first time this goes around, it'll be 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. Basically, whatever the current value of x is, this is what it will print. Of course, we end with a semicolon. Then to make this something relatively easy to read in a web browser, we will then also do print. 
double quotation marks will do break. So this is just a simple HTML break. Close double quotation marks. Again, semicolon. We will close the squiggly bracket. So this closes out what the while loop is supposed to do. So again, you could have one line here or a thousand lines here. Basically, anything between the two squiggly brackets will run for each iteration of the loop. Then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to close PHP. And this is what our loop looks like. So then with that, we go over to our web browser. We type in silicondojo.com. We do 4.php, and this is what it looks like. So if we look at here, so initially x equals 1, and then print x break. So it prints 1. Then when that loop is done, x plus plus, x is now worth 2. Then x is worth 3, 4, 5, and it keeps going all the way until x is either less than or equal to 20, and that's why we get up to 20. So if we go here and we do something such as we just set this to 10, so now we're going to set it initially to 10. We do save, we go over, we upload. Now when we go back to Google Chrome and we do a refresh, then we can see x starts at 10, because we now have x starting at 10, and then it continues until it hits 20. So this is basically how that for loop works. Now it is important to understand that the variable does not have to be created and actually set within the for loop itself. We could just simply call the variable x, but then set it outside. So we could have, we could create x set it to, I don't know, 5 up here, set it to a value, and this is another way that we could run the for loop. So this, this is a way that, let's say, if you're grabbing information from a form or you're grabbing information from something else, this is a way you can create and set the value of the variable from an, a, the output of something, whether it's a database, whether it's a form, whether it's a file, then once this has been created and set, then it can be given to this loop. So with this, this will run basically the same way. If we click save, we go, we upload, and then if we refresh, we can see now it starts at 5. So x, we create the, the variable x, we set it to 5, and then here all we do is we just plug in x without anything, and then we have the same loop going on. So this is basically how the for loop looks and how it works in the real world. So that's all there is to for loops in PHP, and for loops are one of the standard ways that you do loops in PHP. Now, if you haven't been dealing with files or databases yet, this may not seem that impressive. Obviously, you can use this for some, you know, some fancy mathematical tricks, that kind of thing. Again, if you're looking at interest rates or how long it'll take you to pay down a loan or something along those lines, but where this really becomes valuable is when you start reading to files or when you start inputting data into files or databases, you can use something like a for loop to pull information out uh, depending on different variables. So that's what a for loop is and that's why they matter.